What's up, gamers? It's me, your boy, Buddy. Welcome to my channel where we watch and review crazy VHS tapes dug out of the bottom of the uh, Goodwill bins. How are you doing? How, how's you, how have you been? I'm doing great. I sprained my ankle, got put back on my psych meds, so I'm feeling good and crazy. Today, we are going to be watching one of the greatest child safety educational videos of possibly all time. They treat me like I'm a little kid. And yes, that is a child. Welcome to Kids Safe the Video, brought to you by Triaminic Cold and Cough and Cold and Cough Products. In this video, we follow along as young Kathy traverses through her first night home alone without her parents. We'll laugh, we'll cry, we'll cringe, we'll roll around on the floor for a little bit for some reason. It's gonna be a great time. Come along. <laughs> First things first, the intro makes you feel more like you're watching a late 90s Nickelodeon Halloween special than a children's educational video. Oh. 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 <laughs> Emerging from the coffin is the spooky Count Floyd, who, despite very clearly being a vampire, is howling like a wolf. <laughs> He's just figuring out who he is, okay? Hello, Editor Budsy here. Low quality editor, editor Budsy. As I'm working on putting this video together, I'm, I'm learning more about it. Things that I probably should have known before I started filming it. If you're a fan of, like, early 80s Canadian sitcoms, this has an all-star cast for you. Also, it was written and directed by the guy who did Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but it was the first thing he did before Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and everything prior to this, prior to the Kids Safe video, was what I saw described as, like, psychosexual horror, and this was his first foray into, like, children's stuff. So I feel like that explains a lot more about the vibe that's occurring here, and I that 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 seemed like necessary information to share. Also, with everything I just said about Count Floyd, apparently he is a character being resurrected for this specific video, and I don't know anything about this character. I don't know if the howling is like if that's a bit. I, I just wanted to clarify that before I see the two people who give a shit typing in the comments to yell at me about how I don't know about this character. You're right, I don't. I was born in 1995 and I live in America. So don't fucking come at me. Okay, bye. The Count introduces the video as being a scary movie about a little girl who is left home alone for the first time. What's so scary about that? Well, there's a thunder and lightning and <laughs> and a, a full moon. Oh, oh boy. This is Kathy, a child of completely ambiguous age being played by a grown-ass adult. I've been home alone lots of times. Just never at night. Kathy tries to comfort herself by sitting down in front of the TV and flipping through the channels, but she gets more and more scared with every single thing that she sees until finally she just decides... A little cinnamon toast. That, that'll calm my nerves. A little cinnamon toast. I don't have enough cinnamon toast in my adult life, and I think I should change that. She gets bread going in the toaster and goes looking for cinnamon, searching through all of her cabinets until she happens to stumble upon a bottle of gin. Wait a minute. My parents always drink this to calm their nerves. I mean, who's gonna know? Party time. Oh, yeah! It, just, it, puts, it puts some hair on your chest or something. Suddenly, there is a fucking awful sound coming from somewhere in the house, so Kathy heads upstairs to investigate. It's just a branch scratching against the window. It's just a tree branch! It is! Just scratching against the window. <laughs> then, because what else could possibly go wrong, the smoke alarm starts going off. Kathy panics for a moment and then remembers, Oh, fuck my toast! 
She goes running downstairs to discover the entire house is engulfed in smoke. So she dives to the ground and crawls her way over to the toaster, only to try to fish the fucking burning bread out of the toaster with her bare little fingers. When getting the toast out with her bare hands fails to work, she instead grabs a fork and jams it straight into the toaster, inducing a super dope light show and a guitar solo, which does not seem like an accurate representation of what would occur if you were to jam a fork into a toaster. This leads to a fuse blowing, which kills the power, and after a brief moment where she thinks her own shadow is an intruder, oh, that's me. she dials 911. Help! There's a real emergency over here! Send help fast! <laughs> I'll put some butter on it, but butter's good for burns. Just in case it has not become clear to you yet, this video is about how not to handle these situations. Don't do things this way. Don't be this way. Kathy heads into the kitchen to find something to apply to her burn. Peanut butter. I wonder if that will work. What's this? She finds a bottle without a label on it, and so to try and identify what it is, she tips it upside down and tries to sniff it and... In result, squirts ketchup all over her face. Oh, no! Ketchup! Oh, and then ketchup all over my face. Well, that's just great. That's great! Off in the distance, we start to hear sirens approaching the house, which Kathy interprets as... Okay. Sure, yeah. When Kathy runs away, she is greeted by a cop named Ernie and an EMT named Tina who have just gone ahead and let themselves in through the front door. I'm a police officer. I'm being chased by a man from Mars. You're bleeding. And he's carrying an axe. A laser axe, it must have been. I am? Where? Head injury, Ernie. Here, here, here. Now to put direct pressure on the wounds to stop the bleeding. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Come here, come here. Come on. Come on. What? This medical professional just, no problem, tasted blood, what could have been blood, sorry, barehanded to make sure that it was ketchup. I feel like there were several other ways you could have possibly gone about that, but okay, I'm, I'm starting to lose the plot here a little bit more, but we've only just begun. Okay, man from Mars, or whoever you are, come out with your hands in the air. Chief Wiggum here gets brave and decides to finally approach the man from Mars, and the fireman steps through the door as soon as power conveniently returns to the house. He pulls off his helmet and he's introduced as Marty. Marty! A friend of Ernie's, and I say friend with that inflection and air quotes around it, because you will see. Do you know each other? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Gay. The gang all head into the kitchen to check out the damage caused by the fire. There, we finally start to learn how to keep ourselves out of harm as Marty begins informing Kathy of basic fire safety procedures until Tina pipes in and asks, You know about stop, drop, and roll, right? Stop, rock, and what? <laughs> no, it's stop, drop, and roll. And this moment triggers a series of events that I guarantee no one in the universe would have ever expected. As the gang all lead Kathy through how to stop, drop, and roll, oh, yeah. roll, 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 keep yeah. it, roll, roll, roll. Marty, out of absolutely nowhere, just whips out his axe, starts pretending to play it like a guitar, and breaks into song. Sometime in the kitchen, you might touch a wire. You say to yourself, Oh my gosh, I'm on fire! I'll play with matches since you shouldn't do, and the whole pack goes off to set fire to you. You better stop, 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 stop. stop, stop. Holy shit. Motherfucker is rolling around like a pig in the... Mm, oh, yeah. That's better than aerobics. Oh, you've been taking aerobics classes, huh? <laughs> well, we go to the same health club. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay, so... We're beginning to unlock the tension here. They're both simping for the same bitch. That's it. 
Suddenly, the pig, I mean, cop, I mean... Police officer. ...picks up the abandoned and open bottle of gin that has been sitting on the counter and immediately begins reprimanding Kathy about it. You haven't been hit the booze, have you, kid? You're not gonna arrest me, are you? Drugs and alcohol can affect your judgment. Sorry, what? I wasn't paying attention. Up next, Tina pulls Kathy into the other room to start teaching her some basic first aid. And as she does, Ernie stops Marty in the kitchen and tries to get rid of him somehow. Listen, if you got an old game of checkers to play back at the firehouse or feed the Dalmatian or something, feel free to do so, okay? (laughs) (sighs) Tina, what the heck is going on? I was just showing Kathy what to do if you find someone lying down and not moving. But come here, Marty, you can help me show her. I'll do it. Thank you, Ernie. You're welcome, Tina. This is for kids, right? Like, I'm not mistaken. This is for kids, right? Because this is making me very uncomfy. I don't think they need to be talking to each other like that. Unnecessary B-plot. Why does the B-plot have to be a love triangle? This is for children. Hey, mister, wake up! (laughs) I'm awake, I'm awake. Finally, the three emergency responders decide to start heading out. I guess we better shove off. Right, Tina? Yeah, I could give you a ride in the old squad car, Tina, if you like. No, thank you, Ernie. She'd rather ride with me on the old hook and ladder. The audacity of these men. This is workplace harassment. Also, presumably, Tina arrived at the scene in her own vehicle a fucking ambulance and they're just expecting her to what leave it parked in kathy's fucking driveway while she goes off canoodling with one of them no i'm gonna be honest i perhaps i i i i i i ate too much lettuce for that bit with the smoke i'm uh i'm doing great bye thanks for coming bye okay so kathy is left to her own devices and not 30 seconds later there is a knock heard at the door. She hesitates before she goes to answer it and spends a while doing a back and forth with a weird voice on the other side of the door that is claiming that she won a lottery prize and that all she has to do is open the door and they can hand her the check. Finally, the voice manages to convince her to open the door and lo and behold... If I could arrest people for being stupid, you would get a life sentence. Oh, whoa, dude. Lay off her. Kids, folks, tell her never to let strangers into the house. And all it takes is $28 million? I don't know about you, dude, but I'm pretty desperate. I'd risk it all for $28 million. Anyway, now all of the emergency responders are back inside the house because, of course they are. Why would this be over? This is never going to be over. It's fine. I'm not going insane. You're going insane. It's fine. And the three of them continue to quiz Kathy on what she should do to stay safe in specific situations. Stop. Drop. And roll. Drop, drop, drop. Drop, drop, drop. Remember how, like, not five minutes ago, Ernie and Marty were fighting over who would be able to take Tina out for a hot slice of apple pie in their respective emergency response vehicle? Tina, how about a cup of coffee? Uh, sorry, Ernie, but Tina's having pie and coffee with me. Well, she can have pie a la mode with me. And then out of fucking nowhere, Tina's response is to just... Do either of you know the Heimlich maneuver? Of course. (laughs) I don't know how. Kathy, here's how you do it. Like this? <clears throat> okay, Ernie, I believe I'd like to try that. Oh, no, 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 boys, boys, boys. Yo, she knows. She is aware. She's got that hot shit, and she is showing it off. She's got these men wrapped around her cute little fingers. Tina is out here, gaslight, gatekeep, girl bossing. She's the girl boss pioneer. Well, now that we all know the Heimlich maneuver, uh, we say we go out and get that piece of hot apple pie. Mm. Hot apple pie with melting cheese. I would tell someone to call the police. No, I wouldn't. But you are the police. Get your hands off of her. You look like you're going to crawl up in her ear, bro. Like, back up. Personal space. Go over there. Okay, guys. My boyfriend's picking me up. We have a date. Bye. Date? Oh, my God. She is a queen. She is everything to me. Tina, I love you. But in a respectful way. Like, she knew exactly what she was doing, and it was all for that punchline. I feel so much better now. The gang all leave for the third and final time, with the two simps chasing after Tina, like the seagulls and finding Nemo. Tina! Bye, guys! 
And there, once again, is a knock at the door, but this time it's literally, like, seconds after the door closes. So Kathy just assumes it's Ernie again and doesn't answer it. I'm a friend of your folks. I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah, let's try next door. Did you forget? This is a spooky spectacular. We have to tie in the fact that this is hosted by a vampire having an identity crisis somehow. Anyway, that is the whole video. I, I recommend you watch it. The link will be in the, down in the, in the dis disco. Down in the disco. In the, in the description. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked it, maybe consider leaving little likey subscribe down at the bottom there. I know where you know where the buttons are. And also thank you to Dr. R.I.P. VHS and VC Archives for providing me with the video today. And please don't forget to stop by for the next video where I shove a fork in a toaster and sample the guitar solo. Oh, did you see that? Oh, there was that guy with the hockey mask, and and there, and there was also the the werewolf and the creature from the Black Lagoon was there too. I, I was. He was in the back with the, in the bushes, with the the face and the gills. Oh, boy! I tell you, it was scary. But but Kathy, she showed out smarter then, didn't she? Oh, yes, kids. It could be a real jungle out there, but. If you know what you're doing, you could be a, a Tarzan or a Jane or a cheetah. Oh, well, you know what I mean. Oh, 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 oh.